just please don't sprint. I'm genuinely like, I'm holding my breath. I'm holding my breath. He hasn't sprinted. He hasn't sprint. Don't sprint. Don't sprint. Don't yeah, you fucking sprint. Don't you fucking sprint. No! 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 no. Is it open world? Is it open world? Talk to me, Spartans. What do you think? Dude, look at this massive draw. The draw distance is insane. Don't run, you son of a bitch. Walk. Walk. Walk, please. Oh! Oh, he's walking. Please keep walking. Please. Oh, you right bumper to reload. Wait. That's Halo 3 controls! Wait! Pull! No! 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 Why? Why? No! 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 Uh, database upgrades? Upgrades! You can like upgrade? <laughs> they might, might bring, it bring it back to classic gameplay, which has had no sprint, which is what everyone wants. I want to see Chief's grapple hook that <clears throat> everybody was going crazy about. It says you can use like a grapple hook or something in the corner. Sprint. <laughs> I don't know, man. This is weird. I'm not... This is weird. So I want to make this very clear straight away. I'm a massive fan of Halo. I love the Halo franchise. My first Halo game was Halo 3. I was six years old when it came out and it's been one of my favorite games ever since I first booted that game up. If you're excited for Halo Infinite, if you love the gameplay, don't let my opinions rain on your parade. I hope that when the game comes out, it turns out to be everything you hoped and more. And I mean, I'm going to reserve my final judgment for when the game comes out as well. This isn't a review of the game. But I do have to get a couple of things off my chest regarding the gameplay reveal of Halo Infinite. Ever since we got that reveal trailer back in June 2018, I always thought that Halo Infinite was going to be the spiritual successor to Bungie's Halo. You know, it's a return to the roots, none of this Halo 4, Halo 5 nonsense that was just a bit mental. It's a return to what Halo was in Bungie's original vision, you know. I always saw Halo Infinite as pretty much the true sequel to Halo 3. Going back to the original Bungie art style, taking heavy inspiration from Martin O'Donnell's soundtrack from the original Halo trilogy. And there's a lot of stuff from the Halo Infinite reveal that speaks true to that still. And there's part of me that wants to believe that Halo Infinite will be the spiritual successor to what Bungie built up all those years ago. What we've heard from the soundtrack so far is absolutely brilliant. The return to the old art style is amazing. In the most recent gameplay demo, the assault rifle actually looks really good, and I really like the look of Chief's armor. There's also a return to the Halo 3 controls with RB to reload and B to melee people. The new villain also looks really interesting. The Banished are a really good option for this game. I'm actually really happy with the current story direction from what we've seen so far. The speech at the end of the Halo Infinite gameplay demo, it screamed Halo to me, and it made me very happy. Gunplay looks tight and fun, a huge step up from Halo 4 and 5. It looks like it has weight to it, opposed to being this weird floaty mess that soiled the original combat of the Halo games, oversaturating the gunplay with advanced movements and gimmicks. I'm interested to see how this gunplay is going to work in the multiplayer, which 
will be free to play, which makes sense. It's 2020 and with the current climate of multiplayer games like Warzone, Warframe, Destiny, and Fortnite, you know, whatever, and other free to play experiences, they're absolutely dominating the market and if Halo wants to compete with that, they're gonna also have to fall in line. If they could pull this off, there'll be a really bright future for the Halo multiplayer scene, which has been dormant for many, many years. But most of all, out of this gameplay reveal, I'd say the most important thing to remember is that we now have Craig. Let's be honest, that's the best thing to come out of this demo, isn't it? It's fucking the Craig memes. They're, they're absolutely brilliant. Lord. What is that? That's It's not a next-gen console. And the enemy, the models look like that. Jesus Christ. The Halo Infinite demo broke me. Okay, let's get into the stuff that I really didn't like about the Halo Infinite demo. First of all, let's address the elephant in the room. It's an old demo. This was confirmed by Alana Pierce a YouTuber that makes a lot of content regarding recent video game news and opinion pieces and whatnot. And she got to ask the developers of Bungie a bunch. Bungie? Oh god, no, no, 343, it's not Bungie, it's fuck. Basically, Alana Pierce got to interview some of the devs at 343 working on Halo Infinite, and they confirmed that the demo was in fact an old version of the game, so I guess that's good news, because it doesn't look all that great. Yeah, it's, it, it is an old build of the game. This is very typically done by developers who have certain builds of their game to represent certain stages in development. Most of the time, the newest build of a game is the most unstable, meaning it has the most bugs and basically wouldn't be very good to use for a showcase event. Therefore, a lot of developers opt to use one of their more stable builds, which might not look as good, but plays perfectly. So yes, it's an old version of the game. It's from probably a few months back, but I don't think that excuses all the problems we've seen graphically with this game so far. Let's have a look at some gameplay of God of War before it came out. Two years before it came out, actually, it was a gameplay demo that released, and look how immaculate this game looks. Two years before it came out. Halo Infinite is months away from coming out, this is an old build, and yet the game looks absolutely awful in, in certain shots. Now, I'll play Devil's Advocate. Okay, fair enough, God of War wasn't being developed for previous and next-gen hardware. It came out as a PS4 exclusive title and released for no other consoles, whereas Halo Infinite is coming out for the Xbox One and Xbox Series X. But I do think that's a valuable lesson. If you're going to be having one of your flagship titles, dedicate it to your hardware. Don't limit it by keeping it on previous gen. It shows that you're not making the game for the fans, you're making the game for the masses to make as much money as possible. Which is fair enough, but I think having money is the sole goal of making a video game. It's going to limit the product so much. Okay, for people that are not convinced by the God of War analogy that I use, let's let's use a different game, something that's more in the sort of vein of Halo Infinite. Ghost of Tsushima that came out recently. Can't believe I'm saying that. Ghost of Tsushima and Halo Infinite being similar? They're both open world games, and that's basically where I'm coming from. You could make the point that the reason why God of War looks so good is because it's its own single player experience, it's linear, it's semi-open world, so it doesn't have as many assets to load in as something like Halo Infinite. So let's use Ghost of Tsushima, because Ghost of Tsushima is also an open world game and is gonna work similarly to Halo Infinite. Obviously we don't know how big Infinite's world is, but Ghost of Tsushima's got a pretty sizable open world, so we'll just go off of that. Look at this gameplay from Ghost of Tsushima from two years before its release date. This gameplay came out at E3 2018, and it looks amazing. In some places, better than the final product. Now that's a different kind of worms that we'll talk about a little bit later on. This game looks amazing in its gameplay reveal, much like God of War, because something that's very important in a showcase event when you're showing a game like this, it has to look good. It has to capture the minds of the audience. And if it doesn't look good, it's gonna have a hard time doing that. Remember, this is an open world game running on, at the time, five year old hardware. And it looks this good in the gameplay reveal, two years before it released. Bullshit that Halo Infinite can't do the same and make an actually impressive looking demo for their showcase for arguably Microsoft's last hope. 
Because let's be honest, that's what Halo is, isn't it? It's Microsoft's last hope. It's the only exclusive they really have left by Fable and Forza. So I just think it's unacceptable that the demo looks like this. I'm not saying it looks terrible. There's certain places in the demo where it looks amazing. But my initial reaction was that of disappointment in terms of the visuals. I think we can all be honest here. It looks good, but Halo Infinite doesn't look next gen at all. With blocky, oversimplified textures, a terrible draw distance, some really bad character models, and pop ins on a next gen console. A game that's made to showcase the power of the Xbox Series X. It's just not good enough. Like, it just isn't good enough. And even when giving them the benefit of the doubt and saying that it's an old version of the game, they could have still made a better looking demo. So many other developers have already. I just think they should have picked maybe an area or segment of gameplay that isn't so bland, because honestly, the demo really didn't capture my attention that much. And honestly, it's even more pitiful when you compare screenshots of Halo Infinite to Halo 3 from 13 years years ago. It looks leagues better. 13 years worth of hardware improvements. You would have thought the game would look maybe a little bit better, but it doesn't. It looks worse. Much, much worse. Not to mention, if we look at the original trailer for Halo Infinite, the reveal trailer, the game looks way better than what we saw in the recent demo. Way better, with a realistic art style, none of that blockiness, amazing textures and lighting, and that just isn't seen in the new gameplay demo of Halo Infinite. It's strange, it's almost like they completely stripped away the game of everything that it had before, in terms of graphics at least. It's just really jarring because I remember watching that original trailer and being like, yes, this is the future of Halo. But now after watching the Infinite trailer, I'm not so sure, especially with this whole live service thing they're talking about. But we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video. Time we talked a little bit about Sprint and other enhanced mobility. There's been a massive debate for years whether or not Halo should have Sprint since it was introduced in Halo Reach, and to be honest, I'm not a fan of Sprint. I don't think it necessarily should be in Halo. They've made it work before, but to varying degrees. There's a common misconception that to have speed, you need Sprint, but to be honest, if you look back at games like like Halo 3 and Halo 2's multiplayer didn't really require sprint at all. You actually move at a pretty fast speed in those games, you just don't notice it. And also a lot of the power plays in the old Halo games were based on who could get to the weapons first, and adding sprint in it sort of muddled it a little bit, where everyone's charging across the entire map to get to the power weapons, opposed to fighting for them, they're just running there first. Now you know, maybe I'm a Luddite in terms of sprint in Halo, I've never really been a fan of the idea, but that's just my opinion. In terms of stuff like like sliding and clambering, it's not really that big of a deal. I think games like Halo 3 could have benefited from being able to climb up things. Sliding is a little bit less useful, I don't think it's applicable for a Spartan to be sliding around, but I can see why it was done. They need to keep up with FPSs at the time, and I guess you can put a sliding feature in, it's not that big of a deal. If it was up to me, I'd take it out entirely, but I'm just an old gamer, alright? Leave me alone. Okay, right, let's first off, uh, you're 17, so you're not even old enough to play the game. You're a fucking ugly little cunt, mate, and if I ever see you, I'm gonna fucking slit your fucking face wide open, yeah? You're a fucking angry little fucking spastic. Which brings us on to talking about the grappling hook, which is a topic of controversy. There was a leak before the gameplay demo of Halo Infinite, which did talk about Chief having a grappling hook, and when I first found out about this, I was absolutely devastated because I wanted a classic Halo experience with no advanced movement. But after seeing some gameplay, fair enough, it looks like a pretty fun tool. As long as it's introduced into the story in a way that makes sense, and there's reasoning for it, and it's not just shoehorned in for the sake of a gimmick, then it's fine. Again, much like sliding, if it was up to me, I would take it out, because to me it serves no purpose, really. And to be honest, we've already had one game this year that features a grappling hook, and Doom Eternal was enough grappling about for me. But I'm more interested to see how it's going to work in multiplayer, to be honest. Like, is multiplayer going to be full of people just grappling around, or is it going to be a pickup? I think it should be the latter, because if you just spawn with the grappling hook, I think it's going to cause a lot of complications for PvP engagements, and it's just going to get fucking annoying. Plus, I play Halo multiplayer not to grapple around and fly about, I play it for boots on the ground combat. Halo's always had some of the best boots on the ground 
PvP I've played in FPS. Um, I just want them to go back to those roots because they were so good. And of course, Halo wouldn't be Halo without an extensive array of weaponry for Chief to use. And I'm a little bit disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. We saw a lot of new weapons in the Halo Infinite demo, and to be honest, a lot of them look very uninspired. They're not very impressive, they're passable, but nothing special, and I think this is something that 343 struggled with for many, many years, is introducing new weapons that actually fit with the rest of the weapons in Halo. There's something about the original Bungie weapons that just scream unique. Like, look at the assault rifle and the battle rifle. They don't look like anything you've really ever seen before, whereas the weapons from Halo Infinite just look like stock weapons you could find in any sci-fi shooter. Now, I'm not even gonna try and pretend like I have the design philosophies for a bunch of Halo weapons in my head that would fit the Bungie style. And you know, 343, back when they took on Halo after Bungie, they took on a monumental task, and it's got to be difficult following in the footsteps of such a prolific franchise made by a beloved developer, but you've got to be able to do better than this. Look at the state of this. What the fuck is that weapon? What is it doing? You know, they probably didn't even have enough time to think about the weapon designs. I mean, look, there's a fucking Glock in Halo now, for whatever fucking reason, but they probably spent a lot of time making the open world, because Halo's open world now, which is something that I am not very happy about. I know a lot of people have been making the point, oh, Halo Infinite is, you know, Bungie's original vision for Halo in which you could explore these large spaces of alien environment and feel that wonder, and they're trying to recapture the feeling of Halo Combat Evolved when you first step foot on the ring. But I think people are remembering Combat Evolved a lot differently to how it actually is. There's basically no open world sections in Combat Evolved. It's just on rails and you can tackle objectives in whichever order you want. It isn't this massive open world space with objectives and XP and bandit camps full of brutes to get loot. That's not what it was at all, and that's not Bungie's vision for Halo. People are just coming up with excuses for this shit game design. Halo does not need to be open world. I don't know what made them do this, but something with 343 is definitely very wrong. I genuinely hope they prove me wrong though. I hope this turns out to be an open world that's engaging and full of content that's actually meaningful, but doesn't overwhelm the player and doesn't overshadow the main story. One of the primary reasons why they made Halo Infinite an open world could be because Halo Infinite is a so-called platform for the future for Halo. Instead of segmenting stories into numbered titles, they plan on growing the game over the next 10 years. Supposedly, this doesn't mean it's a live service. I don't necessarily know what that means, but sounds like a fucking live service to me. Perhaps the game will feature expansions and whole new campaigns as updates, opposed to making players buy a new game entirely to play the next campaign. Basically, think about Destiny and how they handle their release of stories and campaigns. Every now and then they'll release a new expansion for Destiny, where you can buy a new campaign that comes with new content. Maybe 343's taking a leaf out of Bungie's book with Destiny. Although I wish they would have taken a leaf out of Bungie's Halo book and not their Destiny book. This whole platform for the future of Halo smells very fishy to me. I don't know what's going on. Doesn't sound like something that anyone wants or asked for, to be honest. And with the graphics of Halo Infinite and the presentation of the game, can this game still go for 10 years? In 10 years time, this is going to look pathetic. Like, if you're planning on a game that's gonna have a long lifespan, at least make it future-proof like Anthem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Anthem was shit, but at least it had the graphics to back up the claim of being a live service. Halo Infinite doesn't even have that. And with how quickly that the hardware for video game consoles is improving, and with how far graphics engines have come in the last few years, this game in 10 years is going to look fucking dreadful, and I can call that now. Halo Infinite was really disappointing for me. Halo is a franchise that I've held really close to my heart for a very, very long time, and I have so many amazing memories from my childhood playing the older Halo games. And I want nothing more for Halo to be back again, so a new generation of younger people can enjoy what I I enjoyed from Halo. <laughs> I made me sound like an old man. Like, it was only like, what, like 13 years ago? I'm 19, okay? I'm not fucking old. That's all I want, you know? I want I want more people to be made happy because of this franchise. I want more people to be able to look back on days of 
endlessly playing Halo split screen with friends and just having a really fucking good time because that's what I remember from Halo. You know, my, some of my fondest memories of playing video games as a kid was playing Halo 3 custom games and I really want Halo to be able to cultivate that community again because they were just such good memories, you know? And you know what? I genuinely think Halo can be that again, but it's in 343's hands to make that happen and it's only a matter of time before we find out if Halo Infinite can be the true spiritual successor to what Bungie built up all those years ago. But until then, I just want to say the Halo Infinite demo broke me. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care. Yeah, Halo Infinite is actually the future of Halo. There's not going to be another Halo game for another 10 years because we're so confident about the fact that Halo Infinite is going to be the best Halo game and it's, uh, it's made for Halo fans. And uh, um, it's coming. It's coming holiday 20. Holiday 20. What's that? Well, sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit of interference. What's that? Oh. Oh, everyone thinks the game looks shit, so we're going we're gonna to postpone it. Uh, sorry lads, uh, sorry, sorry lads, looks like, looks like we've fucked it again, we've fucked it again boy. Everybody should be happy.